No matter what kind of pilot you are, controlled airspace can be a tricky subject. Towered airspace is particularly challenging because of its shape. As a remote pilot, you have to have authorization to fly within this airspace. So the questions are, where does this airspace exist? What are its dimensions? And how do you find out? We go into this in depth at onlinegroundschool.com. Let's check it out. As you've already heard, towered airports generally exist in either Class B, C, or D airspace. Temporary towers are sometimes used in other airspaces, but B, C, and D are the ones that we think of when we think of control towers. These airspaces can have some pretty complex geometry. Class D is usually a simple cylinder, but Class C, and especially Class B, can have outright confusing volumes based on stacked layers. Class B is known for its inverted wedding cake shape. On the chart, the airspace is shown in solid blue outlines. In an ideal world, each layer would be round, but as you see here, some are rectangular and others only have rounded ends. A central core called the surface area touches the ground. All other layers are stacked in shelves whose floors are a fixed height above the ground. Sectional charts are designed for use by aircraft pilots in the air. Their altimeters are calibrated in feet above sea level. So that the charts are readily understandable for them, airspace tops and bottoms are notated in MSL, or feet above mean sea level. The surface area for the Atlantic Class B starts, well, at the surface and extends upward to the top of the airspace at 12,500 feet. An elongated shelf is next starting at 2,500 feet MSL. Next we see shelves north and south, one starting at 3,000 feet and the other at 3,500. Pause the video and spend a moment studying the 3D structure as shown on the chart. Next on the list is Class C. These airspaces generally consist of a central core, the surface area, and a shelf area above that that usually has a 10 nautical mile radius. They are outlined on the sectional by solid magenta lines. In this example at Chattanooga, Tennessee, the bottom of the shelf area isn't flat. It's stair-stepped with three different floor levels. Looking at the larger section on the south, we see that the bottom is 2,600 MSL. The airport information indicates that field elevation is 682 feet above sea level. So, to determine the altitude of the shelf in AGL, just do the math. 2,600 minus 682 gives us the answer. 1,918 feet above the ground. Our third airport airspace is Class D. These surround towered airports that tend to be on the smaller side, although there are plenty of Class Delta airports that are larger than some Class Charlies. There are no shells or layers in Class D, just a surface area usually shaped like a cylinder or a drum. They're normally round, but like with any airspace, they are sometimes irregular in shape. They are outlined by dashed blue lines. The top of Class D is specified inside of brackets in hundreds of feet MSL. In this example, the Class D extends from the surface up to 3,700 feet above sea level. Field elevation is right at 1,200 feet, so the Class D extends 2,500 feet above the ground. Now note this dashed magenta border just outside of the Class D. This represents Class E that starts at the surface. Because the Class E surface area is associated with an airport, you'd have to get an authorization from the FAA to operate there. Here are the rules for remote pilots. You must have an airspace authorization to fly inside of any Class B, C, D, or Class E surface area associated with an airport.